looking at is one of a series of photographs that were taken in 1927 by Heinrich Hoffmann of Adolf Hitler pro, uh, rehearsing uh, his gestures, his speeches. In 1927, this was kind of a pivotal time for Hitler. He had gotten out of Landsberg prison, you know, where he wrote uh, much of Mein Kampf. And, but he was still kind of uh, almost a failed leader. That is, he wasn't sure where his career was going. The Nazi party was kind of in, sh it was in shambles, you know. Up until 1927, he's still banned in Bavaria from public speaking. He can speak to Nazi party gatherings, but not to the general public. That ban is lifted in 1927. So now he can go back into those beer halls and use that as, as a key propaganda vehicle to win support for the Nazi party. And this, there were about 44 or so of these photographs that were taken. Now you say, well, why, why did they take these? Well, uh, the, they're, they serve an important function. One, Hitler, of course, was an orator who gained prominence in the beer halls of Munich, speaking first to hundreds and thousands of people. And he was a very gifted speaker, but it was also he understood the importance, as did Hoffmann, the photographer, of creating this public persona of himself and of using gestures in those speeches to convey emotion or, um, or uh, views to the audience. That is, he understood the, the importance of body language. And so I liken this often to media training. That what we're seeing here is, is the creation of a of a politician. And so, so Hoffman is taking these photographs of him so that they can study and learn from these, so that Hitler can use these gestures in public. Now these eventually, about six or so of these, Hoffman in the 1930s made into postcards. Now initially, Hitler didn't want to be photographed, which you know, given the numbers of photographs of him, it comes as a surprise. But, but uh, Hoffman talks about the time there was, a, there was kind of a contest for people to get a photograph of Hitler. But Hitler wouldn't let himself be photographed. So Hoffman, he knows Hitler's going to be there. Hoffman joined the Nazi party early on, 1920. And he see, he's hiding in, behind some plants as Hitler enters a building. And he starts taking some photographs. He's discovered and they smash, I think he had glass negatives at the time, and they, they smashed those. But he gets to know Hitler. You know, he tells him he wants to take his picture. And eventually Hitler warms to the idea. And so Hoffman becomes his court photographer and confidant. They become friends, they share an interest in art. And Hoffman, you know, builds up these, he starts creating these books about Hitler, the Hitler no one knew, you know, and takes all kinds of photographs of Hitler. And, and he and Hoffman work, Hitler and Hoffman work together. They say, okay, this image works, this is no good, don't ever use this, don't show me with glasses, don't show my front teeth because I got a big gap there, I don't want people to see that. So he was very meticulous in how he wanted the public to see him. And often what's interesting is that even paintings that were done of Hitler or posters that were done of Hitler often use these Hoffmann photographs as the source. And it was through Hoffmann that Hitler met Eva Braun, who would become his companion until the very end. Eva uh, Braun was working uh, for Hoffmann in, in, uh, in his office, and uh, Hitler became attracted to her, and they became a couple, although her presence was kind of hidden from the public. That is, in the public's eye, he was married to Germany. They often showed him in the company of women, but his dedication was to the German people, at least in the public image. And so for a lot of, you know, meetings that were going to be covered by the media, you know, Ava Brown was, you know, told to disappear, etc.